Hello, listeners around the world, and welcome to Bedroom in the Bible, B&B, where some of the best thoughts and conversations start in the morning with the Word of God. This podcast addresses topics focused on fostering foundations in marriage, family, and identity. Through deep valleys and mountaintop highs, my husband and I have journeyed for more than 30 years together, parenting two children that have launched from the nest and soaring the skies, finding their own way. Our mission is to encourage and equip you on the journey of building a strong foundation in Christ and allowing the sanctification process to sharpen and strengthen your marriage, your family, and your identity. Our hope is is that our conversations grounded on God's Word will lead your faith to be unshakable and your trust to be unwavering as you travel through your own hills and valleys. I'm April Foster, and together with my husband, John, we are honored that the Holy Spirit would choose us to guide others into the way, the truth, and the life with grace and love. Good morning, John. Good morning, April. Welcome to Hebrews 3. And we are reading in the Passion Translation. If you guys didn't get a chance to listen to our pilot episode or Hebrews 1, we do go into a little bit of depth in episode 1 on the Passion Translation. But before we get started reading today, we're just going to give you a little update on our nomadic living situation or semi-nomadic. For for some of you listeners who may be listening for the first time, we sold our home in southern Louisiana, a little town called Hammond, Louisiana. We sold our family home. We gave away pretty much all of our belongings and we are living out of an RV. And right now we're actually coming to you, we're recording this from a beautiful view of the ocean in Virginia Beach, Virginia. But at the time of this airing, when this will actually air on November 21st, uh, we will actually be in New York for a book launch for a book that I was a contributing author in called The Joyful Entrepreneur, Renew, Awaken, and Transform. And it actually did hit the bestseller list, which is super exciting. So if you hadn't gotten a chance to check that out, um, you can find that on Amazon. I actually have some stuff in there about willpower and how our willpower, our willpower is battling God's will. And we have, you know, the power of the wills, which is a really interesting thing as we dive into chapter three, our our rebellion, <laughs> our unbelief, and the power of our wills. So, John, why don't you jump in, start reading Hebrews 3, and we'll, may, we may have a little bit of conversation while we read that. Yeah. So first, let's open in prayer. Yeah, let's do that. That's a great idea. Thanks. Oh, yeah. Father God, as, as we're sitting here in Virginia Beach, taking in the beauty of your sunshine and your wave and your sand and your wind. We we pray that we take in the beauty of your word, word of God, into our minds, into our hearts, and into our into our spirit. We thank you for this word and we pray that you just speak to us through this word. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Yeah. All right. Let's get going. So <clears throat> Hebrews chapter three. Jesus greater than Moses. And so, dear brothers and sisters, you are now made holy, and each of you is invited to the feast of your heavenly calling. So fasten your thoughts fully onto Jesus, whom we embrace as our apostle and king priests. So right out of right out the gate there in verse one, the footnote uh, actually the footnote that's very, very interesting that I wanted to call out. And basically it says, this calling originates in heaven and draws us into heaven. However, in the Aramaic, this phrase is calling, called with a calling from heaven. 
which is the Aramaic title of the third book of the Torah, which is Leviticus, and it refers to the calling of the Levites as priests. And that really spoke to me because it's it's very interesting that basically here they're they're calling us to be priests. It's it's basically the same calling when they called the Levites to be priests that they're referencing here, where you know they're referencing that we are the priests and Jesus is our king priest, as it says in verse one. So I thought that was interesting. I wanted to point that out. So verse two, for he was faithful to the Father who appointed him. In the same way that Moses was a model of faithfulness and what was entrusted to him. But Jesus is worthy to receive a much greater glory than Moses. For the one who builds a house deserves to be honored more than the house he builds. Every house is built by someone, but God is the designer and builder of all things. I just, I think that's a very, very beautiful image there Mm -hmm. that it portrays that. And to me, it's two things. It shows, you know, that we are all part of that. But God and Jesus are—they're the—they're the builders. They're the creators. Verse five. Indeed, Moses served God faithfully in all he gave him to do. His work prophetically illustrates things that would later be spoken and fulfilled. But Christ is more than a servant. He was faithful as the son in charge of God's family. And now we are part of his family if we continue courageously to hold firmly to our bold confidence and our victorious hope. Yeah, this whole section is very interesting. I know you and I, we've read this multiple times. Hebrews is very deep. It's a neat, neat chapter. It gives, again, for some of our listeners, This book, our letters, or series of letters, was written for the Jews to remind them and to define who Jesus is. You know, that's, Jesus is greater than Moses. And at the time, the Jews looked at Moses as their savior. Yeah, so if you remember from Hebrews chapter 2, in our last episode, it was they talked about Jesus greater than the angels, and we discussed a little bit about how you know it was setting the stage for the Jews who were you know the, the idea of the Messiah was still very very new to them, and they were still trying to take that in. And so here, you know, the writer of Hebrews is once again trying to say, you know, here's Jesus; he's the Messiah, greater than the angels, even greater than Moses. So, you know, they, he seems to. Or the writer seems to keep driving that point home, which is important because, again, got to remember who they're writing to. It's, it's Jews who are facing persecution at every at every turn of life. Yeah. And again, you know, it says in verse five, just to re- reiterate what you've already read is indeed Moses served God faithfully in all that God had given him to do. And his works prophetically illustrates things that would later be spoken and fulfilled. And so the Old Testament is Jesus concealed, and the New Testament is Jesus revealed. Revealed. That's right. So let's keep moving along. In verse 7, this section is titled, Secrets from Psalm 95. This is why the Holy Spirit says, If only you would listen to his voice this day. Don't make him angry by hardening your hearts like your ancestors did during the days of their rebellion when they were tested in the wilderness. There your fathers tested me and tried my patience. Even though they saw my miracles for 40 years, they still doubted me. This ignited my anger with that generation and I said about them, They wander in their hearts just like they do with their feet, and they refuse to learn my ways. My heart grieves over them, so I decreed 
they will never enter in to the calming rest of my spirit. You know, this little section here is the Holy Spirit reminding all the Jews that are reading this, you know, you guys have read this in the Old Testament, what happened in unbelief. They didn't get to enter the promised land. They wandered for 40 years, even though it says they saw the miracles for 40 years. I mean, these miracles included the plagues being delivered from the plagues of Egypt, the Passover miracle, the parting of the Red Sea, the manna falling from the sky, water that came from the rock. They saw and witnessed all these miracles, and yet they still sat in rebellion and unbelief. And God's heart was grieved over that, and he's reminding them. So it picks up on verse 12. So search your hearts every day, my brothers and sisters, and make sure that none of you has evil or unbelief hiding within you. You know, here's our call to action right here. Search your hearts every day. Allow God to search your hearts every day. You know, John and I, we we actually have a prayer together that we we pray. It's like, I think you said, help me to believe, but forgive me for my unbelief. Yep. Yeah. And I love that prayer that one morning when I was just like, I was struggling with something. And I just, I was like, John, I just am having a hard time just saying I believe. And you're like, well, let's just pray. <laughs> pray that we would have belief and then repent for our unbelief. And so it continues in verse 12, for it will lead you astray. Your unbelief will lead you astray. It will cause you to rebel. And it will make you unresponsive to the living God. So guys, like this is huge. This is a call for us to ask God to forgive us for our rebellion and our unbelief. Because in that, our hearts get hardened and it becomes unresponsive to living God. So at verse 13, this is the time to encourage each other to never be stubborn or hardened by sin's deceitfulness. For we are mingled with the Messiah. If we would continue unshaken in this confident assurance from the beginning until the end. So we're we're mingled with the Messiah. We are in the business of the Father. We are partners. We are business partners of Christ. We're sown together, guys. We're sown with Christ. And so let us continue to encourage each other as it reminds us in scripture to never be stubborn or hardened by sin's deceitfulness. This will help us to continue to be living in an unshakable, confident assurance from our beginning to the end. For the scripture says in verse 15, if only today, You would listen to his voice. Don't make him angry by hardening your hearts as you did in the wilderness rebellion. Again, he's reminding us of scripture in Psalms 95. He's reminding the Jews, please don't harden your hearts. Don't rebel. Verse 16, the same people who were delivered from bondage and brought out of Egypt by Moses were the ones who heard and still rebelled. They grieved God for 40 years by sinning in their unbelief until they dropped dead in the desert. So God swore an oath that they would never enter into his calming place of rest, all because they disobeyed him. It is clear that they could not enter into their inheritance because they wrapped their hearts in unbelief. You know, one of the things, John, that I was writing in that chapter, that chapter in The Joyful Entrepreneur about willpowers, the power of the will, is that man's greatest fault, man's greatest kryptonite, humanity's greatest kryptonite is unbelief. And as I wrote in that chapter, and this is just proof to the truths that unbelief is kryptonite to our salvation and 
our trust in God to do what he says he's going to do. Any other thoughts? So guys, you know, we're, we're here together and, you know, we're praying for you guys. We're praying for all of our listeners in, in unbelief and just not responsiveness. So please take time to have a conversation with, you know, with God, if you're listening alone, you know, or if you're listening with your, your spouse or maybe your future spouse that you would have deep conversations about where you are in your belief in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And don't be turned away when you have that unbelief because (laughs) everybody struggles with that here. And here we go all the way back to the book of Hebrews, which was written 60, 70 years. You see, right? And they struggled with it back then. So don't be discouraged. Just keep going forward. So good. So let's pray. This is something that while I was sitting and abiding on the, the, the balcony of overlooking the beach, the, the Lord gave me this word and I'm going to go ahead and read it for all of our listeners. I believe this is such a timely, timely word from from Jesus as I just kind of surrendered my my heart and my mind and my pen to him. So let's pray. This is actually, if you guys can think of this as if Jesus were speaking this over you right now. So let's imagine, let's take a deep breath and let's just imagine Jesus sitting right here in front of us. He is with us and he is speaking to us. I believe that Jesus is saying this. The dawn of a new day has risen from the kingdom. The sands are shifting as the wind changes directions for the American nation. I am calling all my beloved brides brides, to an invitation of encounter with me. I am sitting and waiting in the garden of each man and woman. There will be a revival in the hearts of those who cry out to me. I am ready to save all who call on my name. The lost are not so lost that I can't find them. Each man and woman was marked in my image. I paid a great price of suffering so that each could return to me. I will not override anyone's will, but my great love will woo them back to me. Love is the only way. My love colored the way. My blood shed made a way for all to return to life through me. When there doesn't seem to be a way, call out my name. The only true savior of the world is me. The world doesn't need saving. The hearts of humanity do. I am not saving the material possessions of this world. I am about saving the souls and I will do whatever it takes to restore the garden of Eden so that each of my beloved brides can walk with me and have intimate fellowship with me. The breath of God spirit is the eternal non combustible part of you that remains in union with us. Never forget the end goal of life. You'll never be afraid of death. If you understand the purpose of life, you will never have to worry or fear tomorrow, but you will have me for eternity. My promise is sure and true. I will never leave you or forsake you. I will never stop loving you, even when you don't love me. I can handle your rejection, your anger, your disappointment your sadness, your loneliness, and hopelessness. I've experienced every one of them so that I could understand what it was like. Coming in this world with flesh made me relatable. Pain and suffering is part of every person's journey. Pain is an indicator that something is wrong and needs fixing. I had to experience pain in order to fix what with with. What went wrong in the garden at creation? Healing wouldn't be necessary if something wasn't broken. 
Brokenness is part of the journey. I was crushed for your transgressions. I was bruised for your inequities. You tried to do life without me, but that was never the intended design. Life was meant to be done in community. The time to fully reveal myself to my brides has arrived. Clothed in glory light, I come to restore all of creation, all the sons and daughters of my father. Don't wait another moment to accept the invitation to be forever with me, forever here on earth and forever in eternity. All you have to do is call on my name, Yeshua, Jesus. Breathe deeply the breath of God, Yahweh, and receive hope. The dawn is rising. I am doing a new thing. Hope arise, beloved bride. Amen. Amen. That was beautiful. Don't forget, though, very proud of April for all the hard work she's putting in for her writing. So don't forget to check out The Joyful Entrepreneur. You can get that on Amazon. Don't forget to check that out. Aw, thank you, honey. That was so sweet. All right, listeners, we'll see you next time for Hebrews 4. See where we will be recording from next. See you then. Bye for now.